and we're back guys tennis in a minute i'm your host get energy thank you guys for the love and support remember like the video we are a small tennis network however i appreciate all the love and support we're back at the elite trophy day three and we have results now i told you look my pick was dasha to win this match and she did that uh she won it in straight sets six three six four and she played pretty good guys uh she did have four aces which is an improvement Magda Lynette had four double faults, which really hurt her. And of course, Dasha had her normal routine, you know, multiple double faults, actually six, which wasn't that good. But she did get her first serves in play. Magda struggled to get her first serves in play. And Magda lost 60 percent of her first serves and nearly 80 percent of her second serves. So Lynette is out. There's no way she can make the semifinal. But I hope she enjoyed the experience having probably her best year on tour as a professional and dasha did exactly what she needed to do 24 winners uh she did make a lot of unforced errors as well as a lot of double faults but that just showed her stamina and her perseverance to just keep fighting she literally had 16 breakpoint opportunities on magda and magda had 17 breakpoint opportunities on dasha so it was a really sloppy match but it really came down to the consistency of the first serve for dasha and she advances. Zhu Lin, Ludmilla, this match just ended not too long ago. This was a match I, I picked Ludmilla to win. Now, of course, Z Zhu Lin had that huge win uh, first time out. Uh, no one gave her a chance to beat Kudamatova. And I told you, even in that, if you watch that video, I said, this is probably going to be an upset, you know, because Veronica shouldn't be a five to one favorite over Zhu Lin with the home crowd. So that was a huge upset. But Ludmilla, no upset here, unless you're talking about the first set. Zulin did win the first set. She looked really good. But overall, 12 aces from Ludmilla. She did have several double faults, seven to be exact. But when Zulin's making five double faults with zero aces and barely getting her first serves in play, losing half of her first serves, half of her second serves, the consistency of the aces in the first serve got Ludmilla through and the fastball. Ludmilla loves to play the lines, stretch the court, and then she mixes it up with the drop shot. And I think Ludmilla's got the best drop shot on tour right now. And the reality is when you can play the line, stretch the court wide, and hit an accurate drop shot, you're going to be very dangerous on tour. The only question is, and Ludmilla is getting better and better, right? She's what, I think almost 25 now. She's the type of player that she's going to blossom in the next two to three years. Watch out. I, I could see her going deep and winning a slam. She's knocking on the door. Look at all these 1,000 events where she came close. She's knocking on the door, so watch out for her. Uh, now, the last match of the day, we had... Um, Ostapenko and Donna Vekic. I told you, look, Ostapenko is my pick to win this match. That was a very good line. Donna Vekic has no way of making the semifinal. She is eliminated uh, from the Elite Trophy. But Ostapenko, guys, the world's ranked 13th, six aces in this match. Donna did have eight aces, but it really came down to consistency on the second serve. Both ladies hit about 65% of the first serves, but Ostapenko won nearly 80% of Donna's second serve. Both ladies had double digit breakpoint opportunities, fast balls, very, very messy match. You know, a lot of double faults, 12 double faults overalls, over 60 unforced errors combined, over 30 unforced errors from each lady. But Ostapenko had seven more winners and that really got the job done here. ostapenko has got a really good matchup coming up. We're gonna see if she can advance. If Ostapenko wins, guys, literally she's going to be in the semifinal so things are starting to shape out here with cancun starting next sunday this is the perfect tournament to get us warmed up and i'm doing amazing on predictions the last month of this month of october is amazing we're going to start things off with uh, ludmilla and kudamatova on the prediction today kudamatova guys these two ladies they've played four times the head-to-head -head is even these ladies are good friends Veronica has no chance to make the semifinal because she's battling with Lin Zhu, who already defeated her. So is she going to throw her best friend in alley -oop? That's the question. Do these kind of things happen? We're not going to talk about that right now, right? All right, so they played four times. 
They played most recently at Abu Dhabi. Ludmilla won that in straight sets. Last year at Berlin, Kudamatova, that was on grass. Kudamatova won that in three sets. Previously, they played in uh, 21 Indian Wells, where Kudamatova won that in straight set. That was the Indian Wells that was pushed back, and uh, Paula Badosa ended up winning that one. Now, on the season, Ludmilla's 34 and 23, having a pretty good year. 33 and 22 for Kudamatova. Now, Kudamatova has a good serve but right now Ludmilla serving a lot better Kudmatova has really good movement she's a decent baseliner but right now Ludmilla's angled forehand is stretching the court wide right now Ludmilla's got an amazing drop shot where I just see Veronica just getting so frustrated with the change of variety I think Ludmilla's variety right now is better I have to take Ludmilla to win this match that's the pick there all right, next up, guys. Carolyn Garcia beat your Sadat. Now, listen, I want to apologize on the seated videos for the elite draw. I forgot to cover Beatrice. I went right into that prediction, and I didn't cover Beatrice's game. So I'll do a little bit of that here. Now, we'll start with Carolyn first. Carolyn Garcia, listen, against uh, Madison Keys, I told you she would uh, win at least a set. She would cover the spread and probably win the match. <laughs> she did all three. Five aces, two double faults against Madison Keys. She struggled to get her first serves in play, only 54%. But again, with her good first serve and her power, she did win 83% of her first serves and 72% of her second serves. Uh, she gave Madison Keys a couple opportunities to break her. Both of these ladies played Madison. Now, Beatrice... Uh, she gave Madison Keys a lot more opportunities to break her. Madison had seven opportunities to break Beatrice. Beatrice did serve well. Beatrice had five aces against Madison Keys. She got 68% of her first serves in place. She won 68% of her first serves and 67% of her second serves. Not great numbers, uh, but we all know. And she gave Madison Keys seven opportunities to break her. But listen, Madison Keys rushes opponents. She speeds them up with that power. And so does Carolyn Garcia. She's going to do the same exact thing Madison Keys does, but she's going to really step in more. And, and this this matchup is a very interesting matchup because I say of all the top 20 players, Beatrice the dad plays the best inside the baseline. She doesn't like to give up the baseline. You see Beatrice a lot literally like a foot inside the baseline. She can go past the baseline and play the lines as well. But I think her range is inside the baseline and coming cross court with her left hand but here's the thing about this matchup um beatrice has not covered the spread in 12 of her last 14 main draw matches against older opponents you know opponents 28 or older and beatrice had dad also list literally beatrice she just she doesn't do well against the more experienced players and a lot of people forget that beatrice is still pretty young she's only really been on the main tour for a couple years she's still young so i i think she gets a lot more credit than she deserves i think she's a good player but she's when we're talking about the elite i don't know if she's really there yet carolyn garcia though she's won 11 of her last 12 main draws against left-handed opponents 11 of her last 12 so carolyn plays good against left-handed opponents and of course layla fernandez was like three of those so i mean come on one person and layla should have won literally all of those matches but carolyn garcia has also won the first set in her last six main draw matches listen guys i think this match goes over this is a match where it's very important the winner advances to the semifinal it's gonna go over uh we'll take the first set over eight and a half nice easy pick and uh I think the match goes over 19 and a half games. So that's two picks for you. In terms of Beatrice, again, I think she's got a good mid-range game, good left forehand. Carolyn Garcia is going to rush and speed her up. And Beatrice, I do think Beatrice is the better shot maker. But uh, Carolyn Garcia is much stronger. She's more athletic. She's much more aggressive. She wants to play vertical. Beatrice wants to stay camped out. I think each lady will have their successes. And I think each lady should hold first set over eight and a half and we'll take the match over 19 and a half. Those are the two picks there, guys. Uh, Queen win taking on Ostapenko. OK, this is going to be a good match here, guys. Again, the winner advances to the semifinals. This is going to be good, guys. Um, all right. So Queen win owns head to head against Ostapenko. Uh, they've played how many times have they played twice and they actually played this year and they actually played once at a major 
right? So this year they played in Abu Dhabi. Queenman won that in two sets. The first set went to a tie break. And I say it all the time. If you take the first set off Ostapenko, it doesn't look good for her. Because if you can figure her out the first set, she's going to do the same thing. She doesn't change her game. There's no in-match adjustments. And they played last year, excuse me, guys, at a major, the U.S. Open. Queenman won that as well. Ostapenko, guys, listen. Good season, 37 and 21, 40 and 18 for Queenwin, her best season yet. Asapenko beat Vekic last time out, and so did Queenwin uh, beat Vekic as well. Now, if we take a look at this matchup here, I do want to take a look at what each player does well. Queenwin, good serve. She holds serve. She wins, what, 70% of her, her service games, and she's got a very good, long, deep forehand, much like Ludmilla. Asapenko, on the other hand, decent serve. I think Queenman has a better serve. Asapenko has a lot of power, explosive. And this is the type of matchup here where if Asapenko is going to win, she's going to have to win the first set. She's going to have to get to her backhand. I say it all the time on hard. I like the backhand over the forehand. So when you have an opponent with a great backhand, I'll prefer them on hard over the opponent with a good forehand. Um, much like I prefer offensive minded players in terms of uh, hard court matches over defensive minded players. Asapenko, when she played Donna Vekic, six aces, four double faults, struggled to get her first serves in play, only 54%, and she only won 64% of those, 66% of her second serves. Donna had 11 opportunities to break her. Not great numbers. Queen Wynn, now, Queen Wynn, when she played Donna, she did give Donna eight opportunities to break her. Uh, she she served pretty good. She got her aces up there. I mean, she had 12 aces, three double faults. She she won 67% of her first serves. She got 75% of her first serves in play. She won 57% of her second serves. This is a matchup here where Queen Wynn wants to stretch the court wide. Queen Wynn does not have the power of Ostapenko. And that's we saw at the U.S. Open where Sabalenka just destroyed her off of raw power. Uh, Yelena... I think this means a lot to both ladies, but I think Yelena being a Grand Slam champion, I think this this is an opportunity where she can show her experience of being on the big stage. And I just I think Queenman's overvalued in this in this pick. Even though she's beat Yelena twice, I think it should be a, a pick'em or a slight favorite. Queenman's a she's a pretty big favorite. I don't I don't think that should be the case here. Um I think the values on Ostapenko. Um, I think Ostapenko plus two games first set. That's minus 185. Look, she went four games. She pushed. She wins the first set. You win. I think that's the best value, to be honest with you. Ostapenko plus two games in the first set. It's one of those picks where it's either going to win or push. Um, and yeah, I mean, if Queen Win serves first and she takes the first set 6-3, then you no, know, it could lose as well. But I think the values on Ostapenko plus two games in the first set's good value. I could even see if Ostapenko does lose the first set, I can see her winning the second set. But that's the pick that I would go with. Ostapenko plus two games first set minus 185. Good value. The question comes down to can Ostapenko hold serve? I think she can with her power. Those are the picks. Tennis in a minute. Like the video. Thanks everyone for all the support. Cancun next week. Stay tuned for those videos. They're coming soon.